if you are not measuring your performance, there's no way for you to improve. I think time tracking gives you this sense of peace that you know you are just comparing yourself with the person yesterday, not anyone else. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. I started January talking about project management and organization, and it's been six months. I hope to communicate a little more about the take home messages. And I see a value of reiterating so that it's easier for you to understand how to manage your project. So the very first video I made on YouTube was about smart Go, And I can't emphasize enough how it is important for PhD students to define your goal. So if you haven't seen that video, I hope you go and make your smart goal with me. To summarize a little bit, it's about making specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-sensitive goals for your PhD. And in here, I like to emphasize time-sensitive also implies your awareness on how much time everything will take. And the second video, I talk about the importance of creating a Gantt chart and a milestone that you can accomplish over the course of your PhD. This is like a bird's eye view on all these little tiny sub-projects you have on your PhD and having an anticipation and proposing how much time you're going to use. And I move on to the third video about besides having a bird's eye view project goal, have them lay out as to-do items that are going to fit on your board. We call it the Kanban board system. Over time, you are going to have different days that you are doing different units of the work and you're going to move them across from the to-do, doing and done item. Towards the end, you're going to burn all this post-it sticker with fire and it's going to help you feel better about the end of your day. And for those who are interested in organizing with more complexity, I really recommend using Trello.com or other software that is online. You can go into that video and check out more about Trello. And the fourth video I talk about foundation of project management is to understand the importance and urgency of everything you do in your PhD. In this one video, I'm going to talk about only this section, which is the non-urgent and important task of your PhD. Those are actually the tasks that are the most difficult, like thesis writing, data analysis, and lab work. They are those tasks that you want to procrastinate about. Your attention span and your ability to stick with that task and focus to do more every day is going to tremendously alter your timeline of PhD graduation and towards the end, how much valuable work you are producing in your PhD. This is a little quick recap of what um, I have taught in other videos, so I won't go into detail. Please go and check them out in the other coffee section in your week if you want to learn more. So today I want to cover time tracking. You might ask, why would you like to track time? Your day is busy enough as a PhD. I would say if you are not measuring your performance, there's no way for you to improve. For example, if you are swimming and you're not aware of how fast are you swimming, 50 meter freestyle, then you probably cannot improve your stroke. The only way you get to be more efficient at swimming is to know that you take shorter and shorter time to finish a 50 meter sprint. That is the same principle for reading and writing. As a PhD, we are not all designed the same efficiency to read paper, annotate paper, summarize paper, as well as to write our thoughts after reading. These are consuming processes and I want to emphasize in this video, there are activities that you want to track your time in the day by the minute. You may notice that you are allowed to put in time from beginning to end. Uh, if you have a two hour meeting, it's totally fine to just put in two o'clock to three o'clock meeting, one hour, 
two o'clock to four o'clock meeting for two hours, I challenge you to start the triangle play button and hit that. Yes, that one. And you will be able to find out how long have you been writing. It is critical that you know your score and you're not comparing this with anyone else. It's just from you and the previous day, how much faster, how much more focused are you. And from day to day, there is a difference. And it's like doing yoga. You are bringing your focus to the table and you need to spend your moment with that paper and read that work of the giant and you try to connect with that giant standing on his shoulder if you will writing and lab work you have to track everything by minute um, especially when you are doing some sensitive work in the lab and sometimes you might not be as focused and sometimes you might be distracted by other thoughts internally or externally you may be interrupted by a nice colleague who means to check on you. So if you track your time every day with your writing and lab exercises, you will gain strength and become more resilient as you keep pushing yourself, keep showing up every day to work at a normal working hour and you'll be a lot more efficient and you will thank yourself for starting that awareness is to start pushing the tracking button on the timer. I've written a blog about how to write for a longer time with more attention span. I love bacterial growth curve because it's realistic explanation on how everything is taking so long and why there is a resistance whenever you start something. So when I talk about time tracking, I hope that you will think of this curve, realizing every time you start a project, there is always a resistance. And every time you let yourself immerse in the environment for just long enough time, you will start to hit that exponential growth. And that's the most exciting time. After all, you are human. So in the end, you will feel tired and it's the plateau. I think every PhD should look at it in this lens so that they don't overwork themselves. I encourage that you do time tracking for writing every day. You should write 30 minutes. If you missed my video about daily writing and smart go, I put a link in the description note. Writing every day is important because you get to get in touch with the literature that is new. Second of all, you have no guilt when you run into your PI and that's a million bucks because nothing worse than feeling that you are behind your writing and you meet your colleague in the coffee room and you feel so guilty. By using a timer, it will remind you the fact that you're only spending 30 minutes of your day to write. And the second fact is you might be increasing your ability to focus and write continuously. When I first started writing every day, I could only do 30 minutes a day and I could barely make it to be a daily habit. But as any habit you want to pick up in your life, you want to create an environment that is easy for you to start and easy enough for you to stick with. So I think 30 minutes is a reasonable goal and most people could agree that you have 30 minutes in a day to spare. Um, I challenge that everyone should do it and try to use Toggle. It's a free app, they didn't pay me. I really just think this is the most important hour of your day that you should track and keep monitoring. If anything else you are not tracking, your writing time is the only one measurement you need as a scholar. And of course, if you want to advance your PCR pipetting time, then you know, you can post your time for running PCR. How long does it take for you to prepare a 96 well plate? Those might be a question that you could ask yourself and you can compare how long does it take when you are in the first year of PhD and how long does it take when you are finishing your PhD? That will be an interesting comparison and satisfying in a way that you know you are advancing in your accuracy, the standard deviation go lower, you are faster. So those are the way that you gain satisfaction internally without comparing with the others. You know, Kevin published in Nature and Stephen published in Science. And it's easy to feel like I am the only one left behind and I don't publish fast enough and big enough journals. I think time tracking gives you this sense of peace 
that you know you are just comparing yourself with the person yesterday, not anyone else. It's like pregnancy. When you are comparing your baby with someone else's baby, it never goes well. Vera, why don't you go to medical school? Auntie Cindy's daughter go to Harvard. Why don't you go to a better university? It's a true story. It's always hurtful to compare your own baby with the others, so please don't do that. Time tracking is going to help you have a measurement to compare and you will never feel that personal attack. And trust me, your muscle will be stronger and this is going to be encouraging. I leave you with that. Please let me know in the comments if you have tried it. And I hope this advice is helpful to help you gain traction in your PhD project and have some internal peace when you're doing this PhD. I hope you have a safe week and share this with anyone who might be interested in tracking time and improving themselves in PhD. If you have any comment or question for PhD Coffee Time, please feel free to shoot me any emails or comments or messages on social media. I'd love to speak with you if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. I'll see you the next time.